Good morning, welcome to the Fraslog. Today is February 28th. We're going home. I gotta take the biggest urination of my life. My life depends on this pee. This will be the pee that ends them all. <laughs> I fucked it up, but you know what? I kept up with it. I, the worst thing about my car is the horn on it. Um, it's it's got it's like a thick shell. Picture a giant hermit crab, and he's got like a really awesome feature. Like let's say he's got a really good personality, but in order to activate his really good personality, you have to push his shell really hard. That's essentially what my um my horn is like. Which kind of sucks. I want just like a nice little tapper, like so I can go dee -dee 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 -dee, like really fast. You know what I'm saying? That'd be cool. All right, but no, seriously though, we gotta get home and take a pee. I don't know why, but every time I leave work, I always forget to take a pee. And the thing, my problem is I don't pee very often anyway, so like, um, I woke up at about 4 p.m. yesterday, or 5 p.m. yesterday, and I probably took one pee in the, or like right after I woke up, and then I took another pee before I came into work, and then I probably, I think I peed last night at about, I want to say about 1 a.m., between 12 and 1 a.m., so it's 6 a.m. now, I'm, uh, I'm overdue for a pee. For the longest time, though, I didn't have to ever pee. I pee, like, maybe twice a day. I'm sure that probably didn't help me very much, but, uh, you know, that's an extra minute or two walking to the bathroom and coming out of the bathroom. Ugh. Get off my ass, you old man. I'm doing the speed limit, motherfucker. 55 and a 55. So, uh, I was gonna talk about more stuff, but what the hell are we doing, bro? Um, no. Shit, I should've gone fast. Should've gone faster and faster. Um... You know, just little things in life, they're good. Um, you know, just doing me. A doctor's appointment in the morning for my baby. Gotta take her to get her uh, her nipples checked out. You know, you know the usual. The use, the use, the use. There's this hotel called the uh, Courtyard Marriott. That's it's it's in this really like random location. It's like at this intersection like on your way in town and there's nothing else in the area other than like a nature preserve and like um cornell has like a bunch they basically own all of the land in this area um cornell being like one of the biggest schools in the united states and uh they they just they bought out a lot of land in the area it's really cool because they're preserving it and everything but um this area is very it's just a highway you know there's you don't really expect many businesses to be on here maybe gas stations or whatever but there's this random ass hotel over here, and I don't, know, I don't even know how to get to it. I just know it's there. It's like, it's like 20, like, no, I'd say it's further. It's probably like 40 feet away from that road, so you can't just drive out to it. There's a road somewhere. I think I know where the road is. I've just never looked at when I've gone down that road. But uh, I've never heard a single thing about that hotel. Like, I don't know if it's good, if it's bad, or anything. Um you know so that's our warmer upper for the uh, the fraz log there uh, I guess we can do another like little story time um fuck it let's keep it going dude I've been in an Elder Scrolls mood lately let's talk about our first time uh, I don't know let's just continue oblivion I guess I don't I don't want to like make a Skyrim video and then jump back to another Oblivion video or something, so, um, another, I guess, very vivid memory for Oblivion to me is, um, I really liked doing the, um, the Umbra, getting the Umbra armor set, so I guess, I guess this is more regarding, like, different, like, unique items in Oblivion, so, there's a there was a point where I was like looking at YouTube videos and like 
probably 2008-ish, and um, I started looking up all these like uh, like how to find the best gear in Oblivion, like those kind of videos, and uh, I came across a video where they're like, once you uh, start the game, level one, you can walk right out of the uh, the Imperial sewers and actually. Um, you can pretty much walk right over to this this dungeon. I, it starts with a V, I believe. It's like Vivendi or something or Viva something. It's I believe it's either north or north northeast maybe of the uh, the Imperial waters right there in the circle of the map. Um, there's this little alien ruin there, and in inside is this uh, this this lady named Umbra, and she's got a full set of uh, I believe it's it's Orcish armor or it's Ebony armor. It's one of them. It's like tier four, tier five armor. It's it's down the chain line of, of armors. You know, it's it's past iron. It's past it's past iron. It's past steel. It's past uh, mithril. You know, it's down there a little ways. And um, so that's very very good armor to have at level one. But to top it off, she also has, I believe, another. It's it's the same as her armor. It's either orcish or it's or it's ebony. It's a really good sword. A, uh, just a, I believe it's a one-handed sword. <sighs> just a normal one-handed sword, but it's got, it's got, uh, what is it called? Life, not life drain. It's got, um, what do you call it when you, uh, you kill a monster and you take its, its energy for a soul gem, soul absorption, I guess. Um, but it's also got really good stats. So from that point, after I discovered that umbra person in that cave i would always go out of my way every playthrough to go right there beat the hell out of her take take the umbra armor take the umbra sword and either go sell it for some money or just use that for the majority of the game because it's so it's so good like to have there and um usually i believe uh, like skyrim and fallout they, they kind of scale to the player's level you can't really like go too far ahead um like the areas that have the good gear are kind of over leveled so you can't really just run in there and then the stores that do sell those good items sell them for quite a bit of money so you can't really just go buy them but oblivion was kind of broken in that sense just because this is like a, the only other enemy in that dungeon are like rats so you just you kill the rats and get them out of the way and you're good to go but i think the umbra armor was probably the most memorable armor for me just because it's it's kind of weird, like, this woman Umbra is just down there. I believe there is a quest tied into her. If there was, if there was not a quest, that would have been really cool. Like, just, there's Umbra, she's down in her cave. Like, that's some Dark Souls level lore there. Like, they don't explain anything about it. She's just there. I love that shit. Um, but no, I believe she is tied into a Daedric quest where you, uh, you're basically tasked to go get that, that armor and bring it back to the, the deity or the statue or whatever, and... If you do, you get something, but if you don't, you get to keep her armor. So, you don't even have to turn in her stuff, you just don't. But, um, no, I, I really like that system. <sighs> Oblivion was also kind of weird, because you, you had to go to sleep in order to level up. That was always really weird. You'd have to level up your, uh, your primary skills, and then that would level you up when you would... Like, let's say you leveled up... At the beginning of the game, let's say you picked, like, Acrobatics, like I always did. You picked, uh, Illusion and Alteration, just because you can level those up really fast. You could level up really, really fast in that game because of that. Um, there's just a lot. Oblivion was a really weird game, like, regarding the balance of it. It just, it wasn't really balanced very well. Like, I don't know if they, I'm sure they playtested the hell out of it, but... Compared to the other Bethesda games, like they've learned quite a bit going from that. And uh, no, I love that game. I'm trying to think of another thing. There's another helmet. I forget the name, but it's off the coast of the water, like where the you think like the world would end. You can jump into the water, swim out to shore a little bit, and uh, there's actually like a, a little cliff under the water that you can like swim down to, and it's it's kind of like right on the invisible wall that you can't go by. But you can still see down there enough that when you swim down there, you can see a helmet down there. And what this helmet does is it actually gives you water breathing. You don't have to worry about breathing underwater anymore. Which is also a, a pretty, pretty good helmet to have. Um, but no, that's just, those are probably the two most memorable items for me.
personally. I always like um well, the DLC weapons and stuff. I never really remembered. Like I remember when they announced the Shivering Isles. They were like, we're adding weapon crafting. I was like, oh my god, I've wanted this so bad, like, to pick your own weapon and make it, like, in my head, like, I know this is so stupid to think this, but, like, back then, DLC was kind of new. So, like, when they're like, oh yeah, we're adding a new expansion, you'll be able to go to the Shivering Isles. Um, I was thinking, like, oh my god, weapon crafting, that's gonna be cool, you'll be able to, like, take, like, a, take up, like, a certain type of handle you want. And they'll be able to put like a certain type of blade onto it, and then you'll be able to like adjust the length of it. I used to think so like so deep like about like what I wanted them to add to the game, and they never actually did add any of that shit. But the weapon crafting, I believe, was very basic. You just kind of like pick different materials to make your weapons out of, or something. Eh, it's whatever. Keep this in here. I'm a lazy bastard. I gotta wash my work clothes, man. It's gonna smell like a dirty. Dirty hobo. You guys like that morning sky? Open the door. We are home, and I gotta pee. Watch me pee in here, are you? Oh, dirty people. Ugh.